welcome back to Let's Play AM2R. We found our way deep within, the, within a cavern, within the planet. What has amounted to the Metroid's home base. Now this is what was added in 1.1. In 1.1, this door simply did not exist. And it did not lead, or in 1.0, this door simply did not exist and did not lead to our fast travel method of getting out of here. Which, again, I'm very grateful for, because if you save right there and go, hey, I need to collect some items, you gotta run through a heck of a lot of nothing to get back to anything. Oh, and of course you may never map that spot. Oh, we gotta map everything. Okay, there, I did it. I, I feel like I could have gotten that without actually falling down the waterfall, but uh, whatever. So, into the belly of the beast, then. This area would be, I guess, this Metroid 2's equivalent of Torain? Something Chazo there that's no longer Chazo. And an egg. You can shoot these. Doesn't really accomplish anything. What the poop? Larval Metroids! That's cool! Did we actually get a... Not really. So, I mentioned that um, this, the mechanics of this game obsoleted the room that would have been there otherwise. The room that would have been through the right door of the two doors into this area would have led to the Ice Beam. Because in order to fight larval Metroids, you need an Ice Beam. Genetics Laboratory. Suspended above an abandoned city are the remains of a laboratory. Scan has confirmed that there was extremely sophisticated equipment to be found, along with scientific data of incalculable, incalculable magnitude. Only stasis tanks are left. Organic traces within suggest genetic research and DNA manipulation. Biogenetic substances are an, of an unknown age coat the laboratory's walls. So yeah, how about the Metroids? How about this being the lab where the Metroids were created by the Chozo race? How about them apples? Now, the reason I mentioned the discrepancy in the counter... Get it off, get it off, get it off, get it off! Okay, regular bombs do better than power bombs.
I recall seeing these crystals before. In fact, I recall seeing them way up there to the left of our ship. Dang it, dang it! So I mentioned the discrepancy in the Metroid counter between this game and the original Metroid 2, but they're not actually being more or less Metroids. And that's because all of the larval Metroids that we're finding here in this laboratory were not counted amongst the counter in Metroid 2. But in AM2R, they are counted. Oh, jeez. That's another one of those rooms. This whole area again. This game is... This game remembers very well that Metroid's roots are in... an almost horror-like genre. That doesn't sound healthy at all. So just a heads up to everybody, um... I'm gonna go save. I'll be right back. In the whole of SR388, only one Metroid remains. And where would all of these Metroids that have populated the planet up until now come from? But a queen. Queen Metroid, the only Metroid organism naturally capable of producing offspring. The Queen is the heart of the species and mother of every Metroid born on SR388. Her role in the Hive has hindered her mobility, yet encouraged the development of a long neck and massive head to strike at a distance. Her cell structure indicates she is heavily aged, possibly as old as the lab she is settled in. The years have reinforced her torso to impenetrable levels. The Queen's genetic coding is distinct from the other Metroids, and she may have gone through a unique life cycle to attain her form. One quick thing I'd like to say is I really love that last bit added. It... Just the idea that not every Metroid can grow up to be a Queen the Omegas wouldn't then become a queen. The queen is almost a unique entity in and of itself. Perhaps the queen was created here in the lab by the Chozo, specifically to bring forth other Metroids. Perhaps the queen can't develop naturally. Who knows? But it's the only thing left spawning Metroids on this planet, and it's the only Metroid remaining. Okay, so... So what you want to do here... While its head is flashing, you cannot hurt it. You might as well use super missiles here, because these little things drop so much crap.
You want to beam them down as fast as you can. I'll say, um, the first time I fought this... The first time I fought this boss, I didn't realize... ...that you got power-ups back for shooting these things. And I sat here and I... I sat here and I screw-attacked in the corner, hitting them until they disappeared. And that made this fight incredibly difficult. Why on muscles? I'm gonna get hit, but getting supplies is useful at this point. This fight obviously has changed dramatically from Metroid 2. It might as well be a completely different fight, but the creator did put a lot of care into this fight. In fact, the fight went through several complete remakes. Uh, and that wasn't in Metroid 2. went through so many remakes because he really wanted to stay loyal to the original fighting. He wanted it to feel like you were fighting that same Queen Metroid. but he wanted it to feel new and different and refreshing still. And I think he nailed it. Now this fight is getting harder and harder as it goes on, if it's not entirely obvious. Having plenty of super missile speed to this up considerably, though. But it's getting harder because it's getting harder to parse. Um, or her attacks are coming faster and faster. Just give me the items, give me the items. Give me the items. It hurts, but give me the items. What am I doing? I 
I find it actually gets easier to parse how she's going to um, how she's going to attack you as the fight goes on, because at the start. Because at the start, there's such a huge delay between when she yells and when she attacks. That it's hard to tell when the attack is going to come. And I find it gets easier... Because it gets closer to the yell, and easier to parse. Not given up yet. We're not even in the lab anymore. This is so cool, though. Like, we just went straight across, like, through rooms we went through previously. Ah! 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 Power bombs, piece of crap! Oh, you've seen better days. But the counter still says one Metroid. So either the queen has never counted or the baby Metroid, newly hatched. Oh, and it's hungry. I'm not sure what these crystals are, little friend. But you eat up. In the original Metroid 2, there was no escape sequence. You beat the Queen Metroid, and a small baby Metroid hatched right there in front of you, thinking you its mother. And you got a very peaceful walk Alongside it, as you work your way back to the surface. Metroid 2, you came out of almost the exact same place, and got to work your way over, up and over the cliff that was to your left from the start of the game. That acidic atmosphere had risen, allowing you to walk up here. Hop down to your ship. Your mission complete.
this has been Let's Play AM2R, another Metroid 2 remake. Special thanks goes to Dr. M64 for making this game in the first place. I've perhaps pointed out a little few things here and there that I'm not as fond of with this, but I will say from the get-go that, and I ha did say from the very beginning of this Let's Play, that any complaints that I have with this game are minimal at best. I think this is an amazing game. I think it's so good to get a proper remake of Metroid 2, a game that's very near and dear to my heart. And to be able to play and have fun in the game, a game that doesn't try to do anything new or exciting or fancy or unique, it does exactly what it set out to do. It's a Metroid 2 remake. And that's all I ever wanted it to be. And it's such an enjoyable experience for it. Between bringing back all the power-ups that we got before, between the level layout staying as loyal as it was. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. And that's the best bloody part of this game! Uh! Uh! Super Metroid, y'all! I like this game, yo! This game is great! that they brought back everything that was in here beforehand, that they were so loyal to Metroid 2, but they framed it in such a way that you could actually it was actually memorable, and I could remember what was where, and it felt like it was a place. And they added some new stuff in, but without drawing too much attention to it. The new stuff that was added wasn't because they were trying to make something new or exciting and trying to, like, improve on Metroid 2, they were adding new stuff because how cool would a Metroid game be if you got all the Metroid power-ups? You got the gravity suit, for Pete's sake, and the speed booster, and how awesome are they? And you didn't get them in Metroid 2, but how cool would it be if you did? And they just added that little bit of design so you could. And they, they, they updated it, and... Like, graphically it looks better, mechanically it plays and feels better. I can see what's going on around me, I can jump and somersault, it's great! I like this game! I like this game! Until next time, everybody.